So what we're going to do, we're going to keep an open dialogue between the three of us as well as our audience. Um, but we're going to start with just going over a few terms that were discussed or ideas. Um, first, offering this idea of what is feminism and, over and believing and seeing how the overarching theme of advocating for women's rights um, and equal the equal the equality of sex of, of the sexes. Excuse me. Um, Cooper is using the idea of intersectionality to talk about how race and politics works. Um, understanding what intersectionality is, is how feminism, how women are oppressed, but they're oppressed through not just their sex or their gender, but through the idea of their race. Um, any, any way? Um, sure. Welcome, welcome. Thank you all for coming out. Um, this is an ongoing discussion, um, part of our small school programming, where every March we go through um, feminist dialogues. Um, and intersectionality came up as a, um, as a topic last year when we did a symposium on feminism. And, um, this was just an opportunity to look at it again. Uh, the topic of peace, uh, rethinking intersectionality, and the, the term is so broad that um, <laughs> ongoing discussions need to happen, and that's, that's what we're doing right now. We have this dialogue about it. Um, from my understanding, the intersectional feminist dialogue come, does place um, black women at the source of the issue, right? Whereas regular feminism or traditional feminism considered to really address primarily white women. Um, whereas intersectional feminism says, well, basically white women have a privilege as well as black men may be affected by race, but um, black men are credited by being a man, period. Whereas the black woman is affected doubly by um, by not having the advantage of race and not having the advantage of gender. So All right. so moving forward, she opens with talking about what um, respectability policies are and ways that we are the entry point for us, either now or in the past. Um, understanding that if you went to school, she said, uh, you spoke good corporate English, committed no crimes, raised your children in a heteronormative two-parent household, then you fit within that framework of a respectable family. And how in the 1900s, or 1900s, late 1800s, you're seeing that because of the move from slaves to being your own person and trying to keep from being oppressed. And if we do right, we won't be oppressed as people. She's arguing that now as we move forward, those things, we know those things not to be true and to basically reject what is considered respectable. And advocating for the wretched. Yeah, eventually, yeah. <laughs> um, and to reject the um, respectability of politics, you have to um, understand that it's not relevant to us and who we are today, and that impression doesn't exist, as I said. And then using these two points of claiming the ratchet and understanding and uh, receiving this idea of disrespectability. So, <laughs> here and I ask you all, and yep. the audience, um, is this idea of claiming the ratchet possible uh, for moving the dialogue forward? Um, well, yeah, well, let's define as ratchet. Yeah, define ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> 
was more of a question <laughs> than a statement. And, uh, how, how, how would y'all define magic? I mean, I think it was just being raw, like just whatever that means. Like, I mean, I, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, well, I was um, just saying that it seems to me that what ratchet is is a form of rebellion or a form of a lack of understanding. I, it's, but then it goes back to what you're saying about considering that to be the norm. But it's a tricky way to kind of define that ratchet. Oh, I think um, just like what she was saying in the video, ratchet is parallel to what we, our generation, would have called ghetto. Right. Um, in, 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 in comparison, however, we can say, and, and it just sociably, generations have been digitized to where everything is warp speed and compound to be bigger. So the state of ghettoness has been morphed to be larger than life by this phrase ratchetness. So it's now encompassing of not just what we perceive to be ghetto, of someone maybe talking loudly or someone you know sagging their pants or any form of abnormal self-expression is now has been compounded to, to being overtly loud and overtly ghetto and overtly sagging your pants to where it's not just the top of your underwear showing, but your whole ass is hanging out now. That, I think, is what ratchetness is. It's just a, a, a compound upon mental or social acceptance of ghettoism. It's like a term of endearment now. It's, it's, I don't know if it's a term of endearment because I don't endear my friends with calling them ratchet, even if you are being ratchet. I tend to think at times it's it's, it's endearment, and at times it's it's a uh, you know, it's a diss. But who's doing an endearing in 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 that regard? When you think in in terms of an endearment, I mean, if that's the case, then calling her a bitch that's the term of endearment based on the perception of the individual, but just because I endear the term doesn't mean that it's okay to call her, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To call her that. I mean, so to call it a, a term of endearment would be based off the receiver of the endearment. Well, even with that though, in terms of feminism, using that, that word mm -hmm. today allows that, allows that to be acceptable. Right, right, right. And you know, and, and what you're saying is men didn't fight for that to be acceptable. Right. You know, so, but I think about the time I'm right, not enough time. It's okay, not the whole time, these are just general. Yeah. So basically, what she's proposing is that ratchetness is that entry point for defiance, mm -hmm. right? Essentially, and how it can combat the normal, and we could possibly use it for change. <coughs> also true. You think it's true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think she's talking about, you know, the Cosby was this made up thing. And the properness of being proper is a, she was alluding to that properness as being contrived and being pure ratchet as being truthful. And, but I, I see that as problematic <laughs> because it sets up a binary. <laughs> You know, the same binary that was there in the Art of Renaissance between, uh, you know, the elite intellectuals versus the down south, not, you know, backwards intellectuals. It's a, it's, it's a, so I was, I was actually just going to get ready to say that when you said backwards, what? and we're talking about ratchet. Yeah. You know, I remember growing up, most might have been like, oh, that mother is country. Right. And that wasn't that wasn't a compliment, you know. And it it even meant as a dumbing down, right? Slow, slow, yeah, all that, you know. But the mugs, you know, from the country, I might be, you know, I'm country, 
Yeah. So, so, but it wouldn't fit with say someone growing up, you know, uh, in the city, you know, that using that term country. But I, I tend, I tended to think ratchetness more applied to, and maybe it's my my naiveness, more applied to um, city type situation. But you know, I, I mean. So, in a, well, I was just thinking about the, I remember a while ago we were talking about the word ratchet and how it derived from the word rigid. You know, so with that being the, the commonality between the two of where it derives from, it kind of still carries that, that energy of that word. So it, so right, so wretched to, for one to be wretched is not also a compliment or something that one would strive to be. Right. I think what makes it difficult for us to embrace quote unquote ratchetness is this understanding of embrace basically understanding what the definition is in the place in which we find those definitions. She was talking about placements and how everything is centered in Louisiana and has its roots there. But again, as uh, pointed out earlier, depending on your location, those definitions are different. Um, I think that's the biggest part. So it couldn't really be explained as making a statement. Because look, I mean, what I just listened to, everything is according to the individual's perception and projection. So, what is cool to one might not be cool to another, you know, so, but everybody makes a statement of what they feel is cool, you know, and so does it maybe just simply ask for uh, making a, a, a statement, but I also ask for exception at the same time, you know, which means tolerance. Mm -hmm. I mean, does it make sense? It's, I'm just listening. I never heard of it. Well, the, the tolerance idea, mm -hmm. right, to pick it back on what we're talking about, the reason why intersectionality is even coming up is because the term feminism has been so exclusive. Mm -hmm. Right? And the, the term intersectional feminism is basically trying to get it to be inclusive right. of black women, of gender, of gender, of everything, right? So, um, because for such a long time, feminism has had such a specific um, definition that excluded much, <laughs> many, right? So, part of its vagueness is to try and include different individual points of view because feminism itself is so cut and dry, right? Um, but there is a, that broadness, <laughs> that broadness or that lack of specificity is problematic. Um, right, so it opens up doors for a future with embrace. I talked to my friend earlier about it, like, Medea, can you accept that? Can that be right. the idea of acceptance if you're embracing all facets of wretchedness? And when we get back with part of you, then discuss or claim. Um, and then it becomes on on a exploitative. Yeah. It becomes exotic as well. So <laughs> it's trying to be so she's praising Beyonce, right? <laughs> but at the same time that she's praising Beyonce, she's given a very specific lens an exotic lens that's located in Louisiana. Very similar to when, um, you know, romantics place the lens on Native Americans or tribal people, right? So the way that she's using the, um, the ratchet term, it's almost the same way that she, the noble savage was um, held in our history before, mm -hmm. where it's noble to be this pure, emotional 
being. But I, <clears throat> while we were talking, I was thinking of Josephine Baker, you know, who was known to pass gas, burn, you know, but yet here's this, this you know, this African American woman that people um, are attracted to. But, so that exotic, that exotic, exoticness aspect to her. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, today, someone might consider that rich. Right. I mean, that's how. <laughs> yeah, but is it a virtue? Because I think that's what she's trying to say. Okay. She's trying to say that this ratchetness is closer to a virtue than mm -hmm. the Cosby's fictitious propriety. <laughs> Which I think is it a virtue to be ratchet? to aspire to 
when all everything that we see socially as ratchet is through means of entertainment outside of our everyday immediate life and that we are passing judgment and placing in a category based off our own personal experience. I think that one thing that was uh, back to a few weeks ago um, in the White House when that lady had her knees up all on the couch mm -hmm. and the reaction. That was ratchet as hell. It was, right? And, 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 and we put that in, in context of the lecture of if you're in that position, you should be respect what's been taught to us is that you should have this presence of respectability. And so it was kind of like, I thought that kind of fascinating. Uh, I, just, I just found it interesting how that but, conversation. And it, to piggyback off what you said, we didn't see any dialogue, media or anything to denote that as ratchet behavior. We didn't see anything. We saw that it was disrespectful. We saw that she shouldn't be, you know, I, I remember seeing this video where it was this white guy talking about, you know, you don't let your pet's feet on the furniture. You need to keep your pet's feet off the furniture. You see what I'm saying? But he never said that the lady was ratchet. He just said that she acted animalistic in his soliloquy of keep your feet off the furniture. You know what I'm saying? So is ratchet only relegated to African-American culture or the over of, of, you know, self-expression in feminism? I mean, you know, if you came in with a halter on, looking like Holly Berry from Bats, would we all think you were ratchet, Karina? Had you come in with your bamboo earrings and a and a and a band too? You you see what I'm saying? So it's all I think it's perception and you know, like you were saying, the it, it's who perceiving it and who's putting out there for it to be perceived. You know, right? Because um, she glorifies Beyonce for acknowledging that. Louisiana culture, accepting that culture, acknowledging it, and I guess reflecting it in, in, in a small way, but it's not an everyday thing, right? There, mm -hmm. there is that disconnect, I agree. Um, and how would we behave if we saw that um, in an everyday life? We wouldn't accept it based on societal norms in our in a way, I guess. I don't know why, but what, what, How can we critique what is normal and what is not? Normal? It basically goes back down to that. Like, what if that is okay for me and I embrace that? Or what if it's not okay for me and how do we navigate that difference? Um, is it kind of like that, you know, you can kind of be whatever you want to be in life type of yeah. idea? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can, you know, you can do whatever you want to be as long as you. It seems like that's what you're saying. And outside the norm, you know, I mean, this empowerment should really, first we have to look what goal, what wants to be achieved with that. You know, when we talk about empowerment, what do we want to empower? So, with this uh, uh, feminist group, of course, it empowers the woman, but uh, it shouldn't only empower the woman, it should really lead to that you know, equality, at one point we all come together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when we talk about uh, issues like that, it really means like we have to all be very much outside the box. You know, when we are too much in the box of what is traditional and acceptable right now, uh, I mean, we will always, like in this picture, you see, <laughs> do that to each other, show the finger to each other. So it, it really means, let's just go back to square one, we know that be out of the box in your thinking, and that means accept. Just have the basis of acceptance. So I don't know whether this really makes sense, but I'm just trying to, to follow the conversation. Yeah, the problem is, in the lecture, in what she was talking about, she wasn't talking about acceptance. She was talking about there is a dividing line between Claire Huxtable, Anita Hill, mm -hmm. like so. A black women shouldn't have these educated, respectable positions, or they were fooling themselves to thinking that they weren't being treated as prostitutes, right? 
and Bill used them as prostitutes, right? So she was using that example to say that basically the educated black woman or this respectability idea that if you become educated, you'll be treated differently um, as a, like that was dumb. And she was pointing to Beyonce and saying that, well, being connected to this ratchet culture was actually more efficient, uh, um, more, just more truthful. More truthful because the black body is still treated as the black body. You're still treated as a to be used. Right? So Claire Huxley did all that stuff, but she ended up being used. So that's kind of what I got from, from the <laughs> So she's literally okay. So it's not inclusive to the point where Claire Huxable and Beyonce are in the same conversation. It's not. She's saying that the future has nothing to do with educated black women. The future has to do with this acceptability of being pure ratchet all the time. That's that's what I got from the video. Which, yeah, that's not inclusive. At least her explanation of it. Those empowered to be wretched. Right. Right. And it's weak to be <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> now, now from, from with that statement, and just so I could be clear, is she saying because I didn't watch the whole video in its entirety. Um, but based off your statement, is she saying and I did see the part about Anita Hill and everything, so mm -hmm. are you saying that she's saying that because Cosby had this mm -hmm. contradictory facade mm -hmm. on TV in comparison to his real personal life, that what we saw him partner with on TV mm -hmm. is not really reality, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That in reality, women that are educated are degraded to a sense, but if you are not educated, then you are elevated in a sense, then none of that Cosby ratchetness apply to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. she, she went on even further to say that basically Amber Rose, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. by Amber Rose pointing out Kanye um, sexual tendencies, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, was an empire, I think, versus directly Anita Hill, who is smart or whatever, instead of being in power and she was chastised by the black community for oh, trying to kind of keep, um, what's his name? Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas yeah. from getting, and it, she, he, she's saying that that type of thinking, that type of respectability politics basically does not empower the black woman and Amber Rose does empower the black does. Now I can see now I, I, I can see that in, mm -hmm. in to a degree only because I remember when Anita Hill was going on. Mm -hmm. I remember when that whole yeah. thing happened and Ooh. she was being slighted by her own community mm -hmm. as in terms of I know this is paraphrasing, but girl, everybody get a piece of pube hair on their Pepsi can every once in a while. Shut up and deal with it. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that's pretty much how they carry her, even right. through the trials. It's like, why are you complaining? You see what I'm saying? Right. This is you, you, you're inferior to a superior entity of right. a man, anyways. So just keep that pipe down. And Rose, on the other hand, because, and I, I think. Me personally, I think is because if I don't know, I, Amber Rose on the other hand was and is the epitome of what society socially we could consider ratchetness. So for her to be that boisterous, ghetto, speaking out person, it could seem empowering. But is it empowering to 
degrade someone else's humanity? Is that truly empowering? Can we really look at her as empowering? It's, yes, it's empowering because you spoke up and spoke out. But the topic that you spoke up and spoke out or about is not necessarily empowering because it, it dehumanized Kanye West. On the other hand, if he wanted his sexuality out there, he would have openly put it out there. You see what I'm saying? So empowerment, there's a fine line. If you're going to empower, you're supposed to uplift and edify. Right. You see what I'm saying? But you're not necessarily empowering. So is it, and that goes back to that whole virtuality thing. Do you have a sense of being virtuous when you're ratchet, really, truly? Because ratchetness really degrades. It, it, there's a flip side to that. You see what I'm saying? Because it's really kind of pulling the plug on someone else's humanity. She talked about that, with how, how can Amber be considered ratchet and Kanye not considered ratchet if he runs up on stage. Mm -hmm. So it is a conflict, I feel, that she if you had acknowledged when she point, pointed that out. Mm -hmm. I agree. How do we say what is ratchet and what, is, what isn't ratchet? Mm -hmm. um, th that goes back to my argument of what is ratchet. Right. What is that true definition and how can we gauge that and put that in academia? And then is it sincere or is it a publication? Mm -hmm. Because then what I foresee can happen is even to the Claire Hustables, <laughs> right? Like I need, you know, might be a little bit, might, uh, you know, um, on the job, voice their opinion. Now it allows everybody else to say, She's ratchet. When she's not, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like to 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 the, you know. So I, I think what it does, what it kind of relate, I, I think may relate to what you're kind of saying is that it then that kind of identity can spill over to all, yeah, overshadow exactly. to all black women. It is, exactly. Maybe it's, it kind of sounds like another version of the uh, acting white versus acting black situation. Mm -hmm. Because it, it stems from, you know, for us to be respectable, we have to follow guidelines of white America. And that's that's the rumor that they gave themselves to be respectable. So is it just something like another version of that, like, oh, I don't I'm I'm black and I'm empowered and I'm not finna be acting white. So they embrace this ratchetness as the opposite of that to move away further from a white establishment? So is that their way of trying to not act white and, yeah, like this is true blackness in a sense almost, you know what I mean? I just don't think it's that strategic. Yeah. Hey, I'm just the problem, is, this. the problem is this drink is not as substantive as it could be. Mm. That's the problem. I think Shadi's grasping at straws by pointing out fashion and rap songs to make a case for something that is way deeper than that, right? So she talks about sagging pants and being an indicator of rebellion, but yo, I was there when sagging pants was sagging pants was, was a part of it. Timberlands also was a part of the joint. <laughs> what are you talking about? And to say, of all black culture, to say that this is located in Louisiana, <laughs> that's, that's a microcosm of a microcosm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So to make her argument is, um, she's stretching. She's stretching real hard to make her argument. Um, I do see the, you know, not from this, not from her talk, but I do see that, yeah, there is a double negative when it comes to black women. There is a, there where, where black women are affected by race and by sex more disproportionately than, say, white feminism. But in terms of intersectionality, actually producing something other than, like if you look up intersectional art, it just pulls up posters it's, it's, it's too, what's the word? It doesn't have enough substance 
for you to actually produce something. And it could be too broad. I mean, to, yeah. to add, you know, to yeah. marginalize to yeah. any one specific thing right. over the other. You know, because yeah. when you even even going back to um, think you were talking earlier, and I was thinking about remember when Claire Huxtable in in the episode of the Cosby when she would read everybody their right and rolling her neck and everything like right, that and right, she right. fall out of this state of academia yeah. to realism. Right. You know, and I'm the I'm the head honcho in this house. He might make all the bread, but I'm gonna everybody's gonna do what I say. You know what I'm saying? That could have been nineteen eighty ratchet. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not personifying what her titles, lawyer and you know, the Honeywoods and the beard is all this prestige black that was being propagated in that show, it falls short of that. In those moments, in that segmented moment, she falls short of that. You see what I'm saying? So does that make her ratchet? Nah, I thought that was empowering for me. It wasn't ratchet. That was empowering, it wasn't even ghetto. It's, but right. if we play that same clip and put her in an urban background, take it, take that out of the living room and put it in an urban background with some people doing this, world star, right. then it'll be ratchet. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Right. It'll be so, ratchet. To, to piggyback on you, I think that this particular talk is really about performance mm -hmm. and performativity, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I think that I'm from Louisiana, then I'm going to speak like this and I'm going to look like this. So it's about putting on versus um, actual substance. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a fad at best. At best, the way that she's talking about it, it's a fad. It can't really uh, be supported. It can't be supported. But no, I believe that the intersectionality would be by, by using rationalists and disrespectability, it would be clouded even more by this idea of chaos because there isn't right. a clear um, for emotion in those two terms. Right. Um, okay. That's an an anarchy rules. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's gonna be the most difficult part because <laughs> even with how, um, let's say her name marches, and they say how they were walking with the parades, well, with, with the marches at first, not parades, but then stood aside to make themselves seen, which, okay, yes, be seen, this is important, however, don't make chaos when you're then talking about this performance, you're trying to draw attention to yourself, your, your argument is clouded by, um, by emotion. And not by substance. Right. In that sense. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, the clearest thing she said was, yeah, I'm going to talk about this because at the end I'm going to talk about Beyonce. Mm -hmm. So talk about Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Don't try to build a whole case on John Singleton. <laughs> on, um, talk about Beyonce. The, this whole thing was. Uh, it was way too convoluted to get to a point that was still not clear. It's not clear. If her, her end goal was rejecting whiteness, that's right. essentially what she was saying, but it wasn't very really clear. Yeah, but it even seemed like it wasn't even rejecting Rejecting whiteness was part of it, but it was also rejecting rejecting Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was more geared towards divisive black practice or performance than it was geared towards rejecting whiteness. Was it really about rejecting Claire Huxley or about rejecting Bill Cosby? Both. Because they were the same. Both. If she's not, she if talks she's not about both. But what, was it, wouldn't it have been his construct? It would have been his construct. Yeah. But you know, when you talk about empowerment, because empowerment is still very much in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. How can you empower when you build it on rejection? Now that is very deep. You have to really make very far. Your empowerment 
the very end does not happen when, uh, when it is based on rejection. You see, so of course you are very right. This whole sub sub subject goes so much deeper. You know, you cannot really talk about it just from very much on the surface. So mm -hmm. I mean, that is me. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, I was thinking of uh, uh, Tamika Jean Norris. Mm -hmm. where she has mm -hmm. a, a, body, a body of work. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, college, I, Ivy League Ratchet. Ivy League Ratchet. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. her work dealing with that of being a college grad mm -hmm. from Yale. Mm -hmm. And, but yet, having these notions of either uh, external, perspective or experiences to also internal experiences. However, her approach is still through entertainment. It's, it's not through... Okay. And she's from the ones. So there you go. That's a good point. Good Thank you all for coming out. Any other questions before we? <laughs> Any other questions?